It's only one person. Oh, go on. And I call him Sean. That's Jay Z. We call each other Sean. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Nobody else could call me Sean. He's and the no, only person who's Sean approved. There's not a single person that that outside should be, of family that should be. No, outside. How of sweet is it to have that one bestie that has special privileges, like getting to call you by your special name? Talk about a ride or die friendship between P. Diddy and Jay Z. But they weren't just sitting around making friendships bracelets. These two have been involved in some of the worst criminal activities in Hollywood, and we're here to unravel them all. Solange spilled the beans, claiming Jay-Z is allegedly engaged in some under-the-radar escapades with none other than Diddy. For ages, fans have been side-eyeing the friendship between these two heavyweights, wondering what's really going down because, let's be real, there's an air of shady business surrounding their bromance. These two go way back, like 25 years back, to the rap scene dominance of the 90s and early 2000s. They've weathered some crazy storms that could have ended their career Careers if luck hadn't been on their side. Take 1999, for instance. Diddy, his Bro, crew, I'm and his then-girlfriend Jennifer the Lopez point. in a club when things went haywire. An altercation between Diddy and another dude turned chaotic, shots were fired, and three people ended up injured. Diddy and J-Lo made a quick exit, but the law caught up with them a few blocks away. While J-Lo got a clean slate in a matter of hours, Diddy faced charges of criminal possession of an unregistered gun and attempted bribery. Now, here's Diddy, another man. plot twist. Jay-Z found himself in hot water for a different reason. He got arrested for stabbing a producer who was illegally peddling bootleg copies of his unreleased album, Volmer 3, Life and Times of S. Carter. Jay-Z and the bootlegging producer ran into each other at a club, and Jay-Z whipped out an 8-inch knife, settling the score. Both Jay-Z and Diddy managed to wiggle out of their legal tangles, and instead of drifting apart, their friendship got even tighter. Diddy and Jay-Z have been friends for over two decades. Their friendship went all the way back to the early 1990s. Since their early days in the rap game, Sean P. Diddy Combs and Sean Jay-Z Carter have built a connection that includes musical collabs and off-camera support. From their humble beginnings in New York City to their rise to global superstar, Dum, the duo shared many successes, setbacks, and everything in between. Despite the competitive nature of hip-hop, P. Diddy and Jay found common ground in their passion for music. In 1997, the pair collaborated on a track that landed on No Way Out, Diddy's debut studio album. Around that time, both of their careers were subject to controversy. The rappers found themselves in illegal turmoil in 1999, and they were facing the same amount of time in jail. Per the New York Post, Jay was facing charges for stabbing Lance. Rivera. Meanwhile, Diddy was on the hook for his involvement in the infamous club shooting, which saw him flee the scene of a Times Square hotspot alongside Jennifer Lopez. Both men avoided jail time, and their friendship continued to grow. Their bond seemed unfazed by their previous legal troubles. They were often spotted out together, and they regularly voiced support for each other in public. An incident that occurred in 2007 has resurfaced amid assault allegations against Diddy. In a video from a performance at Screamfest 07, Diddy appears to touch Jay's butt. But the exchange is hard to make out. That Diddy not stop 50 Cent from using the clip to drag Jay into Diddy's drama. 50 took to Instagram in November 2023 to troll the pair, suggesting that Diddy intentionally slapped Jay-Z's butt. The video has also been shared on YouTube and TikTok, and people can't stop talking about that moment. We got hey, hey, hey. You can get down, this nigga. You can get down. This, this a real special on, moment, ain't it? Come on, you get something, nigga. This a real special moment, Let's ain't go. it? Let's go! Hey! more jewelry! Yeah. More Louis V, my yeah. mama couldn't get, get through the bill! Yeah. You and me! Yeah. I'm just saying but, how I feel, man. I ain't one of the... I guess the money should've changed them. I guess I should've forgot where I came from. Yeah. 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 Wait till I get my money right. Who's sad door? Homie, you decide. They say I'm told with so much emphasis. Fit the head to come back out, make my show hot. I so appreciate it. Yo, this, this show, the city, but the drama didn't end there. 
Since then, eight people have sued Sean Combs for sexual assault in five months. Sean Combs is now facing several lawsuits after another woman came forward to accuse him of sexual assault. TMZ was the first to report that the lawsuit was filed in New York on Thursday. A woman named April Lampross accused Combs of sexually assaulting her four times between the mid-1990s and early 2000s when she was a student at New York's Fashion Institute of Technology. CNN reported, I'm confident that justice will prevail and the veil will be removed so no other women will have to endure what I did. Lampross told CNN in a statement. Since November 2023, Combs has faced a cascade of sexual misconduct lawsuits which have damaged his reputation as a hip-hop mogul and led to some companies cutting ties with him. In the first lawsuit, Combs' ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura accused him of rape and physical assault that began when she was 19 years old. Combs denied the allegations on November 16, 2023. Cassandra Ventura, also known as R&B singer Cassie, filed a lawsuit in the New York federal court against Combs, whom she dated between 2005 and 2018. She claimed sex trafficking, human trafficking, trafficking, sexual battery, sexual assault, and gender-motivated violence, among other actions. Cassie claims his controlling behavior started when she met him in 2005. After she signed a deal with Diddy's record label the following year, he allegedly took complete control over her life, including her apartment, car, clothing, and even her medical records to keep her under his thumb. According to the lawsuit, he went so far as targeting rapped kid Kuri, who briefly dated Cassie in 2011 during a rough patch in Diddy and Cassie's relationship. Just one day after Cassie filed the lawsuit, she settled with Diddy out of court. New surveillance footage obtained exclusively by CNN appears to corroborate some of the allegations of abuse against music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. The video captured on multiple cameras shows Combs wearing only a towel, assaulting his then girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, in a hallway at a Los Angeles hotel in March 2016. A lawsuit filed by Ventura in November last year and settled the next day referenced actions that seem to match those seen in this video. There is no audio. According to the complaint, Combs became extremely intoxicated and punched Miss Ventura in the face, giving her a black eye, which according to the lawsuit, prompted Ventura to try and leave the hotel room. The surveillance video obtained by CNN begins as she enters the hallway. The complaint says, as she exited, Mr. Combs awoke and began screaming at Miss Ventura. He followed her into the hallway of the hotel while yelling at her. The complaint goes on to say, he grabbed her and then took glass vases in the hallway and threw them at her. In the surveillance video, Combs can be seen grabbing Ventura and throwing her to the ground. As Ventura lies on the ground, Combs then kicks her twice and attempts to drag her on the floor back to the hotel room. Ventura is seen picking up a hotel phone. Combs seems to walk back to the hotel room, then returns and appears to shove her in a corner. Moments later, he can then be seen throwing an object in her direction. According to Ventura's now-settled lawsuit, the pair began dating several years after they met in 2005. They parted ways in 2019. Combs' attorney said the decision to settle was in no way an admission of wrongdoing. Ventura declined to comment on the video, but her attorney told CNN, the gut-wrenching video has only further confirmed the disturbing and predatory behavior of Mr. Combs. Words cannot express the courage and fortitude that Miss Ventura has shown in coming forward to bring this to light. The video hasn't been seen publicly before and comes on the heels of a series of civil lawsuits alleging Combs' involvement in sex trafficking and sexual abuse. Ventura's lawsuit was followed by six others against Combs. Combs is also a co-defendant in another lawsuit filed against his son, Christian King Combs. Dickers O'Neill, who was a college student at Syracuse University at the time, reluctantly agreed to dinner with Combs. During their date, Combs had intentionally drugged Joy, resulting in her being in a state where she could not independently stand or walk. Combs allegedly spiked her drink when Dickerson and left her drink unattended to use the restroom. After dinner, the two continued to spend the night together. Dickerson Neal recalls Combs taking her to a music studio and then 
to his home where the assault allegedly took place. She felt humiliated and hurt, yet she could not even escape the assault. A spokesperson for Calm said in a statement Thursday that his last-minute lawsuit is an example of how a well-intentioned law can be turned on its head. Mrs. Dickerson's 32-year-old story is made up and not credible. This is purely a money grab and nothing more. Did a second lawsuit accused of rape, revenge porn, and drugging? Joy Dickerson Neal filed her complaint Thursday in Manhattan Supreme Court, a day before the New York State Adult Survivors Act expiration date. Combs videotaped the January 1991 assault and distributed the tape to others in the music industry, according to the lawsuit. Gardner said the Combs and R&B singer Aaron Hall sexually assaulted her and a friend after a music industry event in 1990 or 1991. She said she and a friend met Combs and Hall, who was a member of the R&B group guy, at the record label's offices for an event MCA was hosting. The friend is not named as a plaintiff in the lawsuit. The suit alleges that Combs and Hall were very flirtatious and handsy with Lisa Gardner and her friend, and offered them drinks throughout the event. Tower at the end of the night, Combs and Hall invited Gardner and her friend back to Hall's apartment for an after party. While at Hall's apartment, Lisa Gardner was offered more drinks and was coerced into having sex with Combs, the suit says. After Combs finished doing his business, Lisa Gardner laid in bed, shocked and traumatized. While she was trying to get dressed, Hall barged into the room, pinned her down, and forced Gardner to have sex with him. The suit says, following the alleged assaults, she got dressed and ran from the home, according to the lawsuit. Combs came to their home a few days later to silence them and choked the women until she passed away. Per AP, a spokesperson for Combs told AP that Combs denied both allegations and said the women were exploiting the Adult Survivors Act. Both cases were pending as of late February. The list of victims and their stories go a long way. Diddy is a repeated sex offender who has put a lot of women through some of the most traumatic experiences. In 1999, Jay-Z was arrested for stabbing young record executive Lance Rivera. Jay-Z believed Rivera distributed bootlegged copies of his then-unreleased album, Volume 13, The Life and Times of S. Carter, which was not supposed to hit stores until December 28, 1999. After committing the crime, Jay-Z turned himself into the police accompanied by his lawyer. A witness to the altercation said, Jay-Z walked up to Rivera and said, Lance, you broke my heart. Rivera responded, what? Before Jay-Z pulled out a knife and stabbed Rivera, according to the witness, Jay-Z pled guilty to the stabbing and faced a three-year sentence of probation. When Jay-Z was 12 years old, he said he admitted to shooting his brother, Eric, after he stole one of the rapper's rings. How did he get the gun? I went to someone's house and got it, he said. Explaining how easy it was to acquire a firearm, guns were everywhere. You didn't have to go far to get one, just everywhere. After shooting his brother, he believed he was going to jail, but his sibling refused to press charges and ended up apologizing to his brother because he was a crack addict. It was terrible. I was a boy, a child. I was terrified. Despite being shot three times, he was unscathed. It's like there was some rock angel watching over us, he said in the interview. Jay-Z stands accused of physically abusing a woman in footage from his concert film Backstage. Although a representative for the hip-hop superstar says he was just horsing around, with a close friend. In the clip from the documentary, filmed in 1999 and available on DVD, the 34-year-old rapper appears to slap and then push a woman in front of him as he walks down a corridor with his entourage. But the footage has been dismissed as taken out of context by a spokeswoman for the star. In footage from Jay-Z's concert filmed backstage, she tells a New York Daily News the person in that video is someone who he has worked with for years and they were very close and for it to be excerpted like that is an insult. Diddy and Jay-Z seem to be just as cool as they ever were with each other. Diddy showed love to the Brooklyn native during an appearance on Sway in the morning and revealed that they had plans to go into business together. Me and Jay, we've talked about it. We said we want to pick the best one 
Diddy explained, it's going to have to be that one thing that gets it all the way popping. In 2022, Diddy and Jay stood by DJ Khaled as he was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and were spotted chatting during the ceremony. However, Hav has stayed quiet amid allegations that Diddy was involved in a litany of salacious acts, leaving fans to wonder about the state of their friendship. Meanwhile, 50 Cent has continued trawling the pair. He took to Instagram on March 27 to suggest that Jay was missing because he had not spoken out about Diddy and his legal troubles. Sounds like Diddy and Jay are two peas in the same pod. They are both some of the most powerful figures in the industry. They both share the same ambitions and passions for music, and they both have their fair shares of sexual assaults and criminal activities. Such a great match, if you ask me. Can't wait to see how they meet their downfall.